President Trump's choice of Gina Haspel to head the CIA brought the debate over enhanced interrogation techniques like waterboarding, stress positions, and sleep deprivation surging back. Um. This is Jose Rodriguez, Bruce Chesson, and James Mitchell. They're among the architects behind the CIA's detention and enhanced interrogation program. You said the following. These people, referring to Drs. Mitchell and Jessen, were experts on the SEER program, mm -hmm. which is a military training program that trains our people how to withstand interrogation tactics. Mm -hmm. Jim and I went into a cubicle, sat down at a, at a he sat down at the typewriter, and together uh, we wrote out the list. What we did, regardless of what phrase somebody else decides to use to describe it, is we provided them with a list of techniques. Uh, as techniques that we thought uh, had worked well in the SEER school. And was it your idea to reverse engineer SEER, or was that Dr. Mitchell's idea? Well, the idea, and I don't know where it came from, the idea was to use that experience uh, offensively. The techniques used in the military SEER school eventually became the basis of the CIA's program. I don't think there was anything on that list that hadn't been done at the SEER school. Mm -hmm. Was there, were there things done at the Sears School that were not on that list, though? Infinite number of okay. things. A third military psychologist was actively studying the physical and psychological effects of the techniques used at Sears School. Are the physical and psychological pressures which are designed for use in Sears School for training students intended to be used against detainees to obtain intelligence? No, Mr. Chairman. But a 2002 memo from the CIA General Counsel to the Department of Justice used a memo from Dr. Ogrisik to make the case for waterboarding, claiming it was almost 100% effective in producing cooperation and that it did not cause long-lasting physical or mental harm. So you did not believe when you sent this memo that what you said about the lack of psychological harm given the controls there, uh, that, this, uh, that these techniques would be used against detainees? That's correct. So if, 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 if they were subjected to those techniques in the way that the program intended, your view is that it was impossible that they would be harmed? My view is that it's so unlikely as to be impossible. You told Colonel Baumgartner that waterboarding was completely inconsistent with the stress inoculation paradigm of training that we use. It was more indicative of a practice that produces learned helplessness, a training result that we tried strenuously to avoid. Is it fair to say that you can get almost anybody to say anything if you're hard enough on them over time? Um, I, I would say that that's true, but that's also the problem. Through interrogations with several detainees, investigators honed in on one courier, Abu Akbar al Kuwaiti. Ultimately, he led the U.S. to bin Laden's front door. But bin Laden's capture only amplified the debate over EITs. Listen to how McCain and Morrell took the same set of facts but drew different conclusions. The trail to bin Laden did not begin with a disclosure from colleague Sheikh Mohammed, who was waterboarded 183 times. But it was two detainees who, after they were subjected to EITs, gave us very specific information about Abu Ahmed. We did not first learn from colleague Sheikh Mohammed the real name of bin Laden's courier or his alias. The first mention of the name Abu Ahmed al-Kuwaiti, as well as a description of him as an important member of al-Qaeda, came from a detainee in another country. And so two guys who were being fully cooperative with us lie to us about Abu Ahmed. That tells us that Abu Ahmed is important. really important. They're right? In fact, not only did the use of enhanced inter interrogation techniques on colleague Sheikh Mohammed did not provide us with key leads on bin Laden's courier, Abu Ahmed. It actually produced false and misleading information. And then KSM goes back to his cell, and we're monitoring the conversations, and KSM tells everybody he can reach, don't talk about the courier. Denies existence. In short, it was not torture or cruel, inhuman, and degrading treatment of detainees that got us the, the major leads that ultimately enabled our intelligence community to find Osama bin Laden. 
Senate Intelligence Committee report detailed a long list of brutal treatment and did not flinch from calling it torture. In the specific case of Osama bin Laden, the Senate findings reinforced in a running series of tweets today by committee chairman Dianne Feinstein said information gleaned from tortured detainees did not help find him. John Brennan took the highly unusual step of calling reporters to CIA headquarters in Langley, Virginia to make his case. Detainees who were subjected to EITs at some point during their confinement subsequently provided information that our experts found to be useful and valuable in our counterterrorism efforts. And the cause and effect relationship between the application of those EITs and the ultimate provision of the information is unknown and unknowable.